Yellow, yellow. Any sound? Oh, we got sound. Right on. Okay. Crazy outfit here. Boy, oh boy. A shoemaker never wears good shoes, huh? Okay, this is 1080. A 1900. Oh, let me see now. What the heck is this one here? Uh, this is a 2-inch uh, focal reducer I'm working on, by the way. And this is 1920 by 1080p at the moment, and it's 15 frames per second because uh, my internet's too slow. Oh, this is very, very, very cool. Wow. Didn't expect that, folks. Uh, not that good. Okay, let me see if I could catch up here on, uh, uh, on the image here a little bit and see if we could do uh, some minor adjustments. But I think it's uh, self-explanatory, I guess. It's... Uh, Wow, the response is very slow, actually. So, this is very hard on a computer. This is a gaming computer, and that SDI is certainly uh, working overtime a little bit. So, uh, the computer is, anyways. Yes, uh, Bobster, I agree with you. Um, wow, I don't know what to say about this. Uh, <laughs> All, uh, all of my uh, friends that observe uh, Deep Sky, they have no idea what they're messing with the moon's out. Because when the moon's out, they don't observe at all. To me, a real astronomer, you observe when the moon is out or not. And if it interferes with whatever you're doing, look at the damn thing. I mean, there's so many stuff to look at. We always learn about the moon. We always learn about uh, the resolution of it and... It's a good way to practice to focus. It's a good way to practice and get your camera right, get your collimation right. Uh, I mean, it's it, it, it's just uh, there's no end to it. When the moon's there, might as well observe it, and that's exactly what we're doing. But boy, I have to admit, the uh, resolution is really, really good. Oh man, that camera is really good. I knew that sensor would do it. I was at AstroCats um, this year, I believe it was in June, um, I met with Steve Chamber of Attic Cameras and we had a little discussion and I kind of slipped it out to him, we're going to use that new sensor for what we were planning and he certainly raised his eyebrows and uh, he has never heard of it. So I briefly showed him some uh, technical papers on it, on the uh, sensor and uh, engineering papers uh, very briefly just to, to hint to him what was coming out and uh, he found it most interesting and I tell you the results speak for themselves here right now yeah that's correct Chris you were there you remember uh, Steve Chambers from Attic came Attic's uh, Attic camera very nice gentleman he came over and uh, to our booth and I showed him the uh, the sensor I was working on, the Panasonic sensor. This is a Panasonic sensor. It's a real HD, high definition. Now, the, the biggest part was to convert all of this into, as, into an, an astronomical camera. And uh, fortunately, we, we were able to do it. If anyone uh, has a computer on, obviously, now and you're seeing the picture, grab the corner of the picture itself and make it big. You'll see how clear things are and how much bigger everything is. Actually, it's a moss. Uh, there's CMOS, there's MOS, there's CCD, and there's SCMOS. According to Panasonic, this is a MOS sensor, not a CMOS. I have never got a clear explanation from the engineer uh, that designed the sensor. I've been in communication with him a little bit, so it's a MOS. If you go to Oh, hang on, Chris. Let me uh, bring up the uh, Malincam, um, net, and I'm going to copy and paste the uh, paperwork on it or, or some information on it. <coughs> and the internet is slow here. This SDI is drawing a lot of juice here on the system, so... Um, 
the voice probably going to cut out at one point and wow this is slow okay hang on folks hopefully my system won't crash here it's a full HD and okay hang on a sec guys hang on a minute I'm not sure if um, that is a metal oxide substract correct here's some PDF uh, go take a look at that I think you do mention moss this is metal oxide substract and uh, that sensor is an actual real HD. You can tell by the uh, the picture of it if you go on the website and look at it. Uh, Chris, this is on a 16 inch and I'm using a 2 inch focal reducer on it. We've been work I've been working on that new 2 inch focal reducer, try to improve it a little bit. And uh, this is what we're seeing tonight here. Now this is 1080. I'm surprised we get to broadcast 1080 here. So the camera's at 1080 and the broadcast is also 1080. Uh, Chris, just to let you know, I ordered a, a brand new Mead LX200 10 inch ACF uh, last week. Hopefully we'll get it next week. And uh, the third observatory that will be built very soon here is going to have the Mead uh, 10 inch LX200 ACF. And we'll be doing most of the experiments with that scope instead of 16 inch because as you know Chris some of the guys kind of uh, blame me for using a large scope and they don't want me to use a large scope since when's it dictate which scope I'm allowed to use Wow uh, that means the food I have in my fridge if they would see it they would not allow me to eat it you know what I mean like or the type of toilet paper I use for that matter so the bottom line is just jealousy. We use what we use, plain and simple. Hey, good evening, Don. Really glad to see you're on. So Chris, it doesn't matter what someone uses for scope. Um, I, on the LX850, I've got the six inch set up in there. Haven't tried it yet, but uh, it's ready to go. I'm just waiting to get the other uh, dome built, the third dome, uh, the metal dome, uh, the 10-footer here that's going to be built uh, soon and we're going to have a brand new LX200 uh, uh, 10 inch ACF in Altaz mode of course. I always use Altaz just like we're using Altaz at the moment. Uh, resolution, um, very impressive. For 1080 this is uh, Quite remarkable, actually.